Today I'm leaving the main part of Zion Canyon and heading to another part of the park that far fewer people visit, the Kolob Canyons section. You have to get out on I-15 and head north to get there. Doing so allows you to drive a section of interstate where the posted speed limit is 80 miles per hour, not something most of us regularly experience. Kolob Canyons has a number of nice hikes into a series of finger canyons that dead end after just a few miles. The one I chose is favored by rock climbers and has great shade and reflected light for hours, allowing for an extraordinary photographic experience. Unfortunately, I started off this trip to Kolob with a true heartbreak. I came across this beautiful scene with light cutting through a narrow section of the canyon, illuminating just this single pine tree with the walls completely in shadow. This video was shot later after the sunlight had intruded on the scene. I made a crucial mistake by not exposing Ektar immediately, but instead a piece of Provia, which just doesn't have the latitude this scene requires. If I had done the Ektar first, I might have been able to salvage this image, but the light was progressing so fast that by the time I used the Ektar, it was already too late. But look how nice and dark this is here. Just a little light up on the wall here, but that doesn't bother me. Of course, the tree is overexposed. So I switched to Ektar, and by the time I moved the camera and recomposed to get more of this tree, the sun had created this large highlight up here. But I actually like that okay. If I could just have had that with this dark area, but I don't think I can have that, so I just have to arrive earlier before all that sunlight starts hitting the walls. Well, as I kept exposing more sheets of film, the sunlight just keeps going further down and down into the composition. Every sheet, it just keeps getting worse. I've tried scanning these in, but that bright sunlit wall on the left just doesn't work. But if I could just have that first image, and hopefully get there just a little earlier, you can see how nice this would be. If I cropped it maybe like this, and without those sunlit highlights, or maybe slightly different crop like this, and hopefully get there early enough without those highlights, how nice this could be. Oh well, now I know when I have to be there to have time to set up, and if that tree survives, I might just be able to capture the image I have in mind. Well, I'm back in the same little meadow uh, here in the Kolob Canyons that I visited last year. And last year, the trees right behind me were bright yellow, but there was no other color. I'm a couple weeks earlier this year, and so now those trees are green, but over here, I've got some really pretty fall color on the maples. And uh, so I set up a composition with those in the foreground and the nice uh, cliffs in the, in the background there, and it's all being just beautifully uh, lit with this reflected light from these cliffs uh, right here. So it's a really neat little picture and uh, just a nice quiet little scene that reflects uh, it's just the quiet nature of this uh, Kolob Canyon. Uh, it's getting narrower as I go up canyon and this is all the farther I made it last year because I spent so much time here photographing but I really want to go all the way to the end. It's kind of like a box canyon. It kind of goes into a V at the end and there's already climbers in there. Uh, it's a very popular climbing canyon so I look forward to seeing them. And uh, So I'm just going to get packed up and keep heading on up canyon. It's such a nice morning. It's so still. Last year it was a little windy. It was hard to use the view camera but it's just perfect right now and I look forward to seeing the film on this one. I think it's a pretty neat little scene. So anyway, let's pack up and see what else I can find up Canyon. Here's the sheet of Velvia. It looks pretty nice, but I'm not crazy about these two broken off tree trunks down in the lower right corner. It's reality, but I'm not sure if they're too distracting. I'll darken the upper right corner a bit and all in all, I'm fairly happy with this image.
Well, I found this beautiful little uh, grouping of maples in two different colors and just sort of a, a main one with some trunks I can see and then a little different color back beyond and just a nice little vertical vignette. So I'm really excited about this one. Still just dead calm and this beautiful reflected light in this little area uh, where I was earlier this morning. Just such a nice place to photograph. So it's been a great day here in Kolob. Uh, I'm just about out of film again and uh, so I'm ready to pack up and head back down the trail. There's a lot of up and down to get into this area so I've got a lot of elevation loss but up and down on the way uh, to get back to the car so then I'll have to get back and load some film and see what I can do this afternoon. But anyway thanks for coming along to this beautiful part of Zion that not that many people get to the Kolob Canyon section. I really recommend it. It's um, really calm and peaceful and, and you can really you know find some good solitude and the and the light the reflected light in this particular canyon is just stunning i mean wow really really nice and it lasts for hours and hours so it's a great place to be so anyway thanks for watching and we'll see what happens a little bit later on today this sheet of velvia looks great it's well exposed and there's not much needed to finish off this image I like the off-center tree trunks and the depth created with the lighter leaves in front and the darker ones behind. So I actually did something for this picture that I don't normally do. Uh, normally, when you're photographing along the ground and you want to align the plane of focus to the subject plane, you tip the lens forward a little bit. Now I'm doing more, I'm exaggerating by showing a lot here, but you, you tip the lens forward and that shifts the film plane, or sorry, the focus plane and lines it down uh, along the ground if that's, if that's what your subject plane is. Well, in my case, these trees, the top of the trees, were closer to me than the bottom leaves. So I needed to a lot, so my, my subject plane was actually like this, tipped back toward me, as opposed to like this along the ground like you uh, would normally use this movement for. So because my subject plane was actually like this, I actually tipped the lens back to align that focus plane with the subject plane. Again, not this much, I'm just exaggerating. Uh, just a little bit, but it was enough to help me bring it all into focus, and I saw it to stop down to like 45 and a half, but hopefully, uh, when we get the film back, we'll find out if it worked, but it looked good on the ground glass, and that's one of the beauties of the view camera. It allows you to manipulate all kinds of aspects of the, of the subject to work to your advantage. Now if you've watched my videos from last year's fall trip, you may remember this image. I liked it very much and it had an okay glow, but was missing the fall color in the foreground. Well, arriving a few weeks earlier this year allowed me to find wonderful color in the foreground and I was also lucky to have even better reflected light on this very special scene. So I think the image is much improved and I'm very happy to have found these excellent conditions. Well, that's it for today's video. Next week, I'm back in the main part of Zion exploring with my view camera, and I even managed to find a subject to explore in black and white. I'll see you then. If you enjoy this content and would like more information about me and my photography, please head on over to my website at scottwaltonphotographs.com. I have an ebook, annual folios, 
and handmade fine art prints available from locations all across the country. Thanks so much for checking that out.